Hello, this is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day 152 of the McShane Reading Plan. It is June 1st. Wow, the year is just moving right along. We are in Deuteronomy 5, Psalm 88, <coughs> excuse me, Isaiah 33 and Revelation 3. Hi, Norm. Uh, anyway, we, we, oh me serious topic today so um i won't be too long deuteronomy 5 moses is reminding the children of israel of the covenant that the lord made with them yes with them even though they were children okay he holds them responsible and he repeats the law he repeats the law. So much of Deuteronomy is Moses repeating the law that we just got done going over. <laughs> Why does it bear repeating? Here we have the Ten Commandments being repeated. Why does it bear repeating? Why, why do we put it on our courthouse walls? Why did we used to emblazon them all over the place? And Well, now they're going away because truth Ladies and gentlemen, truth is not arbitrary. It's not just a relevant thing. It's not say, well, that's your truth. Or truth is determined by prevailing um, mutual assent or mutual advantage. It's mutually advantageous for all of us to um, subconsciously and yet effectively agree that nobody should take something that is not in their possession. Or we could just say that God said, thou shalt not steal. You get the picture? And not only does he say, thou shalt, thou shalt not commit these actions, he looks at the nature of the heart. Coveting, bearing false witness, adulterous now that's a deed but look at this christ said that looking with lust the heart of adultery is in lust you see when we envy when we covet we fall into sin when we have you know honoring the sabbath day that's almost a, a commandment of non-action. And taking the name of the Lord God in vain, that's not even so much um, saying what we frequently abbreviate OMG so much as how do you represent God and are you representing him in a way that is vain? I charged our young people, our graduates at North Dayton, um, Hey, you represent the Lord. You represent your families and you represent this church. Are we taking his name in vain by how we live and walk and talk? We fail. We fail. We need, we need to make sure that we um, ask forgiveness for those and seek to, for those times and seek to be reconciled with the Lord and also seek to do better. Have none other gods before me. That's a sin of the heart. What's in your mind or heart that gets in between you and God? But anyway, why do we repeat these things? Why do we, why do we, ha or have we in the past put these reminders constantly before our eyes? You know, I... And why does taking them down have such a profound effect to the negative, to the, to the bad upon families and society? I never used to be a big uh, fan of writing things on walls or word art, so to speak, um, going in. You know, people, people do it. They put the word family or, or faith or or gather or whatever, all this sort of thing. Um, 
But why do people put those up there? To remind them why they're there. We're here to gather. We're here uh, because we're a family. We're here to love. We're all this sort of thing. People like putting word reminders. One of my favorite things is seeing our chalkboard in our in our kitchen with a Bible verse on it. You know, leaving ourselves reminders, little monuments. Why do we need reminded? Because, ladies and gentlemen, we forget. We forget. We forget. We forget the truth that Isaiah tells us in verse 22 of Isaiah 33. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. So he hasn't ceased to be any of these things. The Lord is the one who judges us, not each other, or not us. We don't get to be our own judge, and your enemy is not your judge. The Lord is your judge. We don't make the laws. The Lord makes the laws. He is the lawgiver. He hands them down. We choose whether or not we fashion our own either individual or societal disciplines to match his or not. The Lord is our king. Our system of government in the United States is designed to make each individual the sovereign of his or her own life. Why does that work? Or why has that worked in the past and doesn't work quite as well as it used to? Because, ladies and gentlemen, in the past it was understood and possibly complacently ignored and assumed that the king of America was supposed to be the Lord, ruling each individual on the throne of their heart to some greater or lesser degree. The divine right of kings did not pass to a throne of the house of Hanover or Windsor. The throne of the nation was the Lord's. Because the throne of, of the world is the Lord's. And that throne will sit in Jerusalem. And upon that throne will be Jesus in the new Jerusalem. He is our king. We'd do a lot better if people treated him as such. If people treated him as such. If we treated each other as such. Revelation 3 gives us three churches that uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. That are very interesting to me because I think it gives us a good bunch of three different uh, attitudes regarding being reminded of the truth of the Lord. We can be like the Sardin, Sardines, not Sardines. <laughs> We can be like the sardines, sardines, and think that we're alive, but really be dead. Just be full of tradition and emptiness. Just be full of works, but really be dead. We can be like Laodicea and not really know what way we're going. Just be lukewarm, tepid, not hot or cold for the gospel. A lot of us are like that today. Or we can be like Philadelphia. Like Philadelphia. A faithful witness trusting in the Lord 
as the open door, keeping the word of patience, trusting him to keep us from temptation. Are we going to believe the words of the Lord? Or are we going to have our own notions or our own attitudes? It's a question, isn't it? That's my thoughts for the night. Do you know the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Do you know the living word, Jesus Christ? See, it's impossible to even understand the scriptures without him. First of all, because his Holy Spirit shines light on the scriptures when he indwells the heart of the believer in Jesus Christ. But number two, the whole book's about him and about his right to rule. And in spite of that right to rule, his sacrifice for us so that we can join him in his kingdom. Praise God. He lives forevermore. Do you know Jesus Christ? It's my prayer that you do. We love you. Have a good day.